Hi guys, holographic dreamers, uh, welcome. So today we're going to go over a very, very, very uh, popular use case in augmented reality for uh, enterprise and uh, medium businesses. And uh, this one is related to training. So here is how it works uh, in um, augmented reality training. One of the most popular uh, solution and use case is step-by-step -step training. So, uh, let me describe a little bit how it works and uh, we'll go into that use case in more detail and the product review just after. The product we're going to review is uh, Microsoft Guides, which is an authoring tool and a play, player tool, operator tool for uh, doing step-by-step -step instructions. So, creating the step-by-step -step instructions and then viewing them and executing on them. So the step-by-step -step instructions, what it is basically. So in a, in a case in general of a physical object or a manufacturing uh, um, or a big engine or something that's physical that you have physically around it, that's complicated, uh, not easy to operate. There's a lot of buttons, there's a lot of things to press, or there's a lot of steps to go through or learn through uh, very specifically. In that case, you can go with a manual and a user manual and follow the step written on the manual, find the different elements. When you work with AR and augmented reality headsets like the HoloLens, for example, or the Magic Leap, or um, even a simple Edmonton display, uh, like the Vuzix or uh, Google Glasses, uh, you can get provided to you step-by-step -step instructions on what to do. And those devices like Magic Leap and HoloLens can localize those instructions on the space. So if you're looking at this complex, and in our example, we'll go over, we did that with a car engine, uh, you can point to very specific element in that car and know where to go and which step to do. Uh, so you don't have to guess or look at a picture, figure out what it is, or trying to find a label or understand what, what that information is. You just go look at it. Oh, it's just there. And it even can indict, indicate to you how to operate it. Like you have to open something in a very specific uh, turn, like uh, turn to the right, turn to the left. You can also indicate those elements within the space on that specific object. So it makes things much faster and very practical because you're hands on and you go on and you're going to do it uh, with your hands because you have at Monday display, so you have your full hands. You don't have to hold the iPad and try to figure it out. So uh, the benefits there is very clear, and today in the past, I'll say two years, has been totally proven. Uh, it gains huge amounts, some pretend up to 60%. Um, I think you would say more realistically on other studies, probably 20% in terms of productivity gain and speed of executions and quality of the instruction learned uh, from that. So that use case is valid. Uh, there's a large number of products and software available today for step-by-step -step instructions. Uh, i say it's the second most popular use case after uh, the remote assistance that uh, we reviewed uh, last week. So let's get started. Um, Microsoft Dynamic 365 Guides. So that's a mouthful. <laughs> and uh, before we start, the product is in two parts, three parts, exactly. The first part is an authoring. So you have a desktop authoring and you have a null lens authoring tool. And the second part is for the operator. So the person is going to learn or the person is going to follow those instructions. Uh, and operate the device himself and follow it and execute on it. The third part is uh, analytics and uh, integrations with your existing systems. So that's why it's part of the Dynamic 365 family. Uh, it's a product to integrate with the other tools and the ecosystem around Dynamic 365 from databases to uh, data connections, biz um, yeah, uh, business intelligence, reporting, all those elements are part of the Dynamic 365 uh, uh, family of product can be plugged and used uh, for the data collected on the guide software and do any, any analysis on what the operator are doing, how the training is going, all those type of elements. So that's the third part. We won't go into too much detail on the third part. Um, I'll just mention uh, what I've learned and what I know on it, but it's still really early. Uh, and uh, I still do not, you know, 
being able to set it up for myself, for example. So, but the first two parts, we're able to do it. So I'm going to go first over how to set it up and create those instructions within uh, the desktop application. So there is a desktop application that comes with it. Okay. So before we get there, this is very similar to what we had as Dynamic 365 Remote Assist. Uh, this is pretty complex to get set up in terms of the number of type of accounts, uh, logins, permissions, authorization, all the setup to get you ready and started and having an account that can work uh, is pretty tedious. So you need to take the time, you need to have someone that kind of likes familiar with the ecosystem of the Microsoft 365, familiar with the ecosystem of the Microsoft accounts in general and permissions that goes with it, okay? When you get that set up and you're good to go, you should have on your computer a desktop applications and near your all lens a remote assist app as well. So let's go on the desktop application and I'm gonna show you on this one how uh, you can create your first guide. So now we're in uh, Dynamic 365 guide. Uh, it's still a preview, uh, and if you sign up for it, you'll get, I think it's almost 90 days, um, but at least you'll get 30 days free uh, to get to just get used to it and learn a little bit how it works. So that's the desktop application. And uh, let me first go back to the home. So in the home, you have the list of all your uh, guides you created. Uh, and the one we've created for ourselves to try the applications and get a feel for it is um, this BMW card uh, cleanup uh, and um, tune up, I would say. So it starts with an ensure, which is kind of like a QR code that you have to initialize and you'll print that and then you'll put that on the physical space for the guides to be able to relocate where you are, okay, and where all the elements are within that physical uh, object or space. And uh, then you create different uh, tasks. So the first task will be how to open the hood, the next one how to make put the coolant in there and change the engine uh, oil, or actually find where the engine oil is, check it, it. And the last one is the windshield fluid. Uh, so all those are already created. I'm going to enter in one of them for showing you guys. Uh, there we go. So now I enter into one of the steps from all the tasks. So the tasks have multiple steps. Each step is uh, comprised of a little uh, text. And um, you can add to that text an image or a video. And they appear on the left here. So if I grab an image, I can just take uh, a picture here and put it in there and that will attach a picture to that step instructions so I'm going to remove that and uh, similarly to the image so you can only display one image or one video those are part of the instruction that I write here and on the left or on the right I forgot exactly where but it's really close to that information card you'll have the video or the text of explanation um, so you create those steps. For each of those steps, you can add 3D parts, which is steps of things to do and each part to do. So the 3D part could be pointers. Let me show you here. There's tons of like 3D parts you have in there. You have a little, so no, sorry. Those are the markers. We have like all type of arrows, um, physical tool, like pick up a wrench, pick up a screwdriver and show that instructions. You can show, you know, be careful where to put your hands and not to put your hands. So this is like physical ends. If you have instruction, if you want additional numbers, you have 3D numbers that you can insert, various symbol uh, that you may think would be useful as well as you can like contextualize the space, like creating circles, circle with arrows, bonding boxes, uh, and other type of elements with uh, nice little graphs here. Uh, so those are all the 3D elements you can put there and you can import your own and you can download your own object that you have that you want to show in there as instructions, okay? So you can go to the next steps and you see here we have an image on this step. So that's the second step on how to do the instruction and you have the third step on this one. So that will complete the task of checking the oil and adding more oil if you need uh, some additional oil in your car. 
And now let's go back to the outline. I'm going to show you how to actually create from scratch one of those tasks. So if we go, I click here, there's this little plus here at the bottom, and then I create, it creates like a blank task for me. So I'm going to do one for um, which you'll feel we can do next. Uh, oh, uh, air filter, air filter. So let's check the air filter. So I click on this, I double click there. This is the first step for the air filter. Um, locate the air filter, and then I can add to it a picture of what the air filter look like, and I can probably put an arrow in there that will put them in space and point to where the air filter is. If on that instruction I need to add another step, I will click here on the plus, uh, add new step, so that creates a second step, and I can navigate from one step to another to another here. So, conclusion on this, uh, so yeah, and that's after you've created all your steps. On this case, I'm going to delete this um, air filter, because this is not uh, something that we want to keep in there. And um, overall, in that software, it's very simple. Uh, very useful, very straightforward, um, and very tight to the WYSIWYG style of what you will see in the HoloLens later on. So, uh, yeah, very simple, but very efficient and intuitive into uh, setting up the steps and setting up the task related to all those training instructions or operation, operational instruction that you want people to be able to, uh, to follow. Uh, overall additional info in there, uh, not much. The insurers are those little markers uh, that you have to print and uh, get to. Um, the outline is what I showed you, and then you can dig for each of those outline the different steps. And that's the, all there is in there. Um, and we'll get back to this document because that's where you see the little analyze here. This is the third part of uh, this entire system. But first, we're going to go to the second part, which is the part that involves the elements. Okay, next step. So after that, the part two of uh, guides, it's um, with the OLEDs. So in um, you can install in there uh, Dynamic Safari Guides and install it there, and then sign on with the same account that you used for creating the author authoring tools. Or uh, if you have like the sharing feature, you can share that. When you put on the OLEDs, uh, and we did that last night. Uh, yeah, we had issue with the OLEDs outside during full full daylight. Just for mentioning, for some reason I don't know. We have old devices, so maybe uh, there is a defect in it, and they're getting too old. The reality is, it showed when we were outside and we we're trying to get a guide going. Uh, the OLEDs themselves would crash. It was not related to guide directly. I think it's more something related to the OLEDs because each other app we were trying to run each time they tried to get some network information, they would crash. Uh, and that was just because when we're in full daylight time. So I need to mention also we're in California, the sun is very strong. Uh, so it might be some interference in there that's making the device not work. But it's to note it that um, it's a problem for the use case itself. Uh, if you are outside and you have a mechanical panel or an electrical panel or a, I don't know, a, a water um, pipe systems, uh, those elements are uh, often located outside and you have to open it and use the headset to figure it out. So that didn't work and it's going to probably uh, be uh, fixed and it's just a temporary feature. So I'm going to start the video. So wearing the other lens, our favorite um, intern, Anna, went into following the step that we authorized uh, over there and so first thing uh, we're going to show is how we author uh, the uh, we continue the authoring because once you have uploaded everything what you need to do is place all those elements in space properly at the proper place uh, if you don't do that at that point you will actually um, have everything just monolithically there and the value of it is really to place the element exactly where they're supposed to be so that's what we're going to show right now. It's the authoring part from within the HoloLens. So here she's selecting author and not an operator. And uh, the project that we've uh, created, like the task or the BMW tune-up. And uh, the first thing to do is to uh, orient, orient the device 
using those QR codes that we have here. So they have to be fixed always at the same place. So usually you would like anchor them or glue them on the device or here on the car. So each time you get started, it will align properly the space, okay? So here's the, Anna going through the different step and she's gonna like go to the element that she needs to align uh, for those. You've noticed one thing that's very interesting is like the old lens is designed for the air tap gesture and most of the application makes you use air tap or voice command. In this case, it's uh, gaze. Uh, you can use the air tap, but the gaze, there's a gaze activation feature, which is um, not usual for Microsoft HoloLens apps. And um, so if you look at elements after a little while, especially for the steps, they will, uh, there's a little timer that goes, visual timer that goes, and then after that, it clicks for you. And that's based on what you're looking at. You see here, it's happening now. Um, so, in here you could have seen just before also, uh, Anna was uh, placing that arrow properly and there's a number of uh, elements on that arrow to allow you to or rotate it in very, various angles. So the arrow is, uh, it can be resized, it can be le uh, turned up, left and up and right. Okay? In terms of the positioning. So on this third step, we'll see what, okay, here you can see when you upload a picture, you remember in the thing, those pictures appear here on the side or the left. Could be a picture or it could be a video. So a video that could show someone else operating it or some warning instructions on what to do and not to do. Uh, so that's how they, they would show there. And so it's an authoring part. So not only you can display elements in there and place them, you see those are the tools for displaying it. Uh, so you can just grab it and move it. And those little balls are around it, allow you to rotate it in different shape. And those plus and minus button that you have on that, uh, actually you're seeing it here, the, the plus and minus button that you have on the right of the sphere, it's to scale it up and scale it down. So you just grab it and move up and down. Um, I'm impressed. There's a lot of very good UI, uh, UX experiment there that are fairly efficient uh, and working really well to get the work done fast. So here, uh, Anna is showing us how we can add uh, directly from uh, the authoring tool in the headset additional uh, arrows and 3D objects or pictures, okay? So here uh, she's selecting a new type of arrow, uh, actually not the same type of arrow, but she's uh, putting it there. And uh, she found it, she's adding it. So you can add like up to six of, uh, no, actually eight of those elements for each scene. And uh, she's placing it uh, for us, uh, for the users. If you click on the little pen, you see that appears here, the little pen on the, um, on the right, that will give you the options to uh, re, uh, remove that element, adjust it, or uh, reassign it. So it's a way of, uh, of, uh, of having more option and it's a little bit hidden over there. So I think um, we're getting there with the authoring tools in this part. Uh, inside the HoloLens. I will go and describe a little bit so the element you see on the windows, you have an undo button on the top, you have a synchronization, the little, uh, the little cloud that you see on the top left. This is to resynchronize from what we did on the other server, on the other uh, authoring software. And uh, and there's a set of additional options you can have but basically it's really limited in uh, too much what you can do there. So here she's at the end of the going through all the elements and uh, now she's gonna go into the process of operating it. So now as an operator, uh, she'll go through the instruction as they've been created for that operator. And uh, there's no more authoring. So that's the operator going into it and doing what is um, gonna be explained to do and could be for his training or it could be for actually operating something in, its, in, in itself. So you can see that the gaze is uh, fairly convenient. And uh, the operators can read, follow the instructions. Uh, or if it's a video, it's, it's, so this is the exclamation point, mentioning and making sure that the operator sees that you don't touch that thing if the car is really hot. Uh, you'll get a lot of a, uh, you don't hear it there, but you'll get a psh. <laughs> because the car was still a little bit hot. Oops, <laughs> I almost burned herself. Um, 
so we don't want to hurt our, our interns. That's that's not a good uh, good policy here. Uh, additionally, it's not on that one, but you could show also in which direction you should turn. Those are all standard, so it's always the same directions. But sometimes you may operate uh, some mechanical element where the direction to which you turn are important. So you may have seen all those arrows that are curved and elements like this can show you where to, to show it. Additionally, we could have put, set up a bounding box to show where things are hot and where they're not. So what's safe to touch and what's not safe to touch. So when you go in with the glasses, you can actually understand uh, where you're safe to go and not safe to go. So here she's following the instructions, using the gaze to go to the next step uh, and uh, figure out all those uh, elements for, for that part. So the, the window that she's looking at with all those instructions here, you can see on the top right, she's pinned, she's currently pinned. Uh, you can also make it to follow you. Uh, at that point, if you have to move around, in this case, it's happening all around this element, but if you have to just to turn around somewhere else, and you want the instruction to stay with you, you can use that pin on the top right to activate or uh, manage that. And um, I think that's all. So yeah, here's you can see the arrow already placed in the space. That's the real value of it. Uh, it's exactly at the place where you're supposed to look at. So there's no confusion in which element you are using or uh, you are supposed to do or not do. Uh, that value there is awesome because um, when you try to write, okay, click on the button that's on the right uh, that looks like this, and it's so prone to errors. Uh, so even if you put a picture and you point to it, that's also not bulletproof. It could be very similar to another place, or it could be just because it's flat, you may just not know exactly where it was. Uh, and the other part is that you don't have to look for third paper. You have the headset on your head and you move around and do it. Now, as we were doing it, there's some drawback, and that's due to the current immaturity of the technology. It's still the beginning of it. Um, one is that the headset is pretty cumbersome, and we're doing it at night, so you see even less uh, when you have an headset on. The, the, the light is dimmer, and uh, it's a bit like you have a little shade. Uh, at that point, it gets very harder to you know really see what you're supposed to do. The other part is um, the sensor on the glasses uh, are designed to be seen uh, from far, uh, element from far away. We had to do some instructions very, very close. And at that point, we had issues where the tracking would be lost and then the arrows would start moving and flying around and it took a little bit for everything to come back to place. Like the instruction panel would fall at the bottom under the car and we had to find it back and put it back up. Uh, and also, I mentioned again before, when we're on the, we tested in the outside earlier during the day, it was not working, just a continuous crash. So it could be a lot of other reasons. I won't say it's guide itself, uh, but the reality is that the devices are uh, new. So hopefully, HoloLens 2, guides is supported on HoloLens 2. Hopefully, with the HoloLens 2, we'll be able to have much better, uh, and those use cases have been fixed, uh, those little problems have been fixed. So here, you can see that this is a success. Uh, the video is, uh, is done and uh, this is the part for authoring and for executing uh, this guide that has been created within the old uh directly and get it working. So, so to conclude, actually we're there, uh, I will mention a little bit the third part uh, of it before. So the third part is you connect guides to the, the rest of the ecosystem around Dynamic 365. Uh, and you can use uh, this new feature called Power, Power Apps uh, within, um, within 365 and the Microsoft ecosystem that will mm -hmm. enable you to do very simplistic programmatic uh, features around the instructions and the data that you can download and get from guys, either the authoring or the execution that has been done by the operator. So that's very valuable to kind of like extend or integrate within your applications element related to guides. Um, so that's some kind of integration that are coming and we expect that there will be much more integration within guide and other applications that you may have for, like if you have a learning management system or uh, various type of uh, storage, uh, learning data, you want to be able to accumulate that and aggregate. Uh, those are now possible with BI uh, connectors and those power apps uh, within guides. 
So I will uh, close here and conclude on Simon Glad. And I hinted a little bit of some of the fallback just before about the technology. So the use case works pretty well. The device is not, uh, and the, the, the specializations, the QR code are sometimes a little bit tricky to get. You need to be at a specific distance, see them. Uh, the UI to actually execute them, there's this little green element that goes and snap. Uh, those are actually well done. So overall, it's positive, but it's still not instant. It's not like I arrive at a place and bloom, it detects. I have to take the time to look at those QR code, make sure that the glasses are scanned them, and then the things are done. So that initial step is still um, cumbersome. And the other part is that the device, uh, like all of this one, has been designed really to work from a distance uh, to the holograms. And in this case, a lot of what you're going to do is going to be arm length. So that's an issue for that device that's not been designed for that. And we see that in a lot of those elements there where uh, you were uh, working on it and we were trying to do these, those actions on the engine with the glasses on our head. And it was kind of cumbersome to have the, the light a bit dimmed. Um, the, you know, the elements within the, the elements to be able to grab and move things around. And then the headset for Anna was a little bit big. And as she was like moving her head in different directions to look under it, the headset start moving also. It was not like designed to really stick when you're trying to look under something. Um, so all those elements are when in the real world, real case, I think make uh, you to be considering on how you use step-by-step -step instruction with the HoloLens and where it will really work for your use case. And there's probably use case in which it's not adapted and it's not uh, perfect. And others, uh, it will still gain you some uh, productivity gain because it's all digital, it's all in context and, uh, and free. But there's probably use case where it's amazingly well uh, designed for where you're indoor and the panel is very simple in terms of uh, layout and you don't have to go into integrate labyrinth of elements all those elements would work really really well also for for that guy so overall i have to say it's a very simple product uh our intern uh still somebody very smart but was able to figure this out in the same day uh and get everything going uh on on um, on our home so i would say that a testament that you don't need to be a phd to learn how to use it or have a computer science degree uh, anyone can pick up guides, start creating guides, and then authoring them, placing them in the HoloLens, and then after providing that to operators, they actually have no need of any skills. Uh, they don't even need to know how to do a NERT app. Everything is gaze-based at that point, and they can just follow the instructions. So it makes it very simple and very straightforward. So uh, it's an easy-to-use tool, uh, and I think it covers really well the step-by-step -step instruction use case for a big volume me uh, mechanic uh, system. You cannot use it for something small that would fit on the decks. It has to be for something fairly, fairly large. I think that's all for concluding our review today. Uh, thank you guys and don't forget to follow us because we have much more coming into the augmented reality world. Thank you. Bye.